Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lana, and today we're gonna take a trip to Llamas. Let's go. Here we go. This here is my dear Russian friend Marinka. She lives just down the street from me, and recently bought this moped. This is her first vehicle ever, and to practice driving it, we decided to take advantage of this perfect day and take a trip to the nearby town of Llamas to pick up our very special bee medicine, the Tetragonistica Angustula honey. We're crossing the San Martin County, going down the mountain from San Antonio, back to the valley of Tarapoto, and then up the mountain to Llamas to meet my friend Roman, who harvests this very special honey right on his land. This is a very medicinal type of honey, and about three times more expensive than Manuka honey, for its nutrient-dense reasons. However, since it's native to Peru, it's very affordable here. I paid 25 soles, which is about $7, for a 35 milliliter bottle. Whereas in the States, if you can even source it, it'll cost you anywhere from $35 to $60 for a one ounce bottle, which is less than 30 milliliters when converted. Why is this honey so, so magical? The Tetrahanistica angustula honey is made by these cute, tiny, stingless little bees, and it is more than 10 times antibacterial, more antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancerous, anti-hyperlipidemic, anti-fungal, has more cardioprotective properties, as well as a significant amount more flavonoids, nitrites, polyphenols, and proteins with active enzymes than the famous Manuka honey righteously justifying the cost difference of the Manuka honey that is created by the Apis mellifera, which is a fancy name for the most common honeybee that is found all across the world. You see, the only reason Manuka honey is so expensive is because the Manuka shrub only grows in Australia and in New Zealand, where the honeybees can collect its nectar, making the Manuka honey a very rare commodity. But the high price of this honey doesn't mean the medicinal properties do it any justice. In fact, there are at least another 250 types of honeys out there that have more than 10 times the medicinal properties of the Manuka honey that is created by the common European honeybee in Australia and New Zealand simply because they have the Manuka shrub. And not too long ago, the Manuka shrub itself was actually treated just another weed. Only recently, it became an important tree for New Zealand. Nowadays, it is used for ecological restoration due to its resilient nature, allowing the trees to grow in extreme climate. The presence of this tree allows it to prevent soil erosion and allows more plants to grow under its shade. Manuka tree acts like any other tree out there, which means it helps to improve the environment and benefits mankind, just like the trees in your own backyard. So next time you think about splurging on Manuka honey justifying its cost because you were told it's more medicinal, think again. And remember, it's all just another marketing scheme. Okay, so why are you all of a sudden so excited about honey, Lana? Great question. Let me tell you why. For centuries, humans have been using honey for all of the medicinal value it provides, making it one hell of a superfood. What is a superfood? A superfood is a nutrient-rich food, considered to be especially beneficial for health and well-being. Sure, it is also a marketing technique to sell more of something when the term superfood is used, but in my world, the definition is how much nutrition is my body actually getting from a certain amount of one food? Let's discuss it in simpler terms. If I eat 100 grams of avocado, compared to 100 grams of a deliciously meaty and fatty ribeye steak. Which of the two would satiate my body with nutrients more than the other? I hope I don't have to explain this, as we'd all agree it would be the ribeye steak. Right, guys? The same way, we can look at the properties of honey. 100 grams of honey, which is a shit ton more than enough, in fact, we'd probably only really need a solid tablespoon a day to reap the many benefits of this precious nectar. Now, what could we compare honey to for it to make more sense as to why I consider it a superfood? Comparing it to sugar would just be insulting since sugar has absolutely nothing but calories with no nutritional value whatsoever. Comparing it to other sweeteners, such as maple syrup, agave syrup, stevia, monk fruit, oh gosh, the list could go on and on, and still, honey beats them all because of its unique medicinal value that no other sweetener on this planet has. 
So how about we compare it to Western medicine instead? Ugh, I guess cough syrup? Ew. Again, raw unfiltered honey would beat it by a long shot, minus all the nasty chemicals that they add into the cough syrup. This is actually stupid to compare, and I hope at this point you are picking up on what I'm putting down. And I don't have to explain any further how nutrient-dense honey is compared to any type of medicine you can buy in the pharmacy for treating open wounds, the common flu, or even use them as eye drops. And yes, this brings me back to my story of why Marinka and I went on the ride to Llamas to begin with. You see, a few months ago, after my diet in Dos Mundos, I began to have issues with my eyesight. I'd wake up in the morning with blurry vision and eyes so dry it would embarrass the Arizona terrain for its infamous year-long droughts. So I was tempted to try Sananga, which is a sacred plant medicine taken in the form of eye drops. It's made from the roots of the Tabernay Montana Yundalate shrub. It is a traditional medicine of the Yuwanawa tribe of Peru and often taken to massively enhance vision abilities at night in the forest. It is a key indigenous medicine applied with hape. So the indigenous people have this 21-day protocol with Sananga, which they claim will heal many issues with the eyes and even fix cataract, which is what I believed I have going on with me in both eyes. But after talking to many people who have tried this protocol, I learned that for almost all of them, their vision actually got worse. Oh, so I chickened out and decided this protocol wasn't worth the risk. Then, out of the blue, I started to meet people who have claimed to heal their eyesight issues by using the Peruvian Tetrajonistica Angustula honey instead with miraculous results. God kept bringing more and more people into my life who kept confirming these results. And so once I found the guy who harvests this very special honey, my dear friend Roman, I knew it was time to give it a shot. And since I live in Peru, it wasn't hard to find someone trustworthy to provide this magical eye elixir for me. Now I'm on day 15 of the 21 day protocol with dropping this honey into my eyes before bedtime. And I can safely admit I am noticing the positive effects for myself. So although all raw, unfiltered honey is pure magic, please be aware that some honey will be more nutrient-dense and medicinal than other. Also, whenever I say honey, know that I'm only talking about raw and unfiltered honey, not the shit syrup disguised as honey that is sold in most supermarkets across the world. Please don't put that in your eyes in an attempt to treat your own eye issues. Wow, okay, so I was all over the place with getting to the point here. But every detail is important, I suppose. You see, the overall point of this video, not that there needs to be one, but the overall point being here is that Peru continues to provide me with all the natural medicine my body has been needing, and it's been healing me in ways I never knew I needed. I'm just here to utilize my voice and share that there is true medicine in this world, and it simply cannot be found in the world of pharmaceuticals, you guys. True medicine comes from Mother Earth. The earth provides us with everything we need, and disease is created by those who are currently upholding the status quo on this planet. And with that being said, I'm out. Until next time, y'all, stay healthy.